such an asshole. Hi, you kids doing assholeconsulting.com. If you've got questions, Cappy's got answers. But the solution is always you. You will be the solution. I merely paint the way. It's up to you to do the journey. But Cappy, is there a way you can do all the work and then through magical words, my problems just go away? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you a rich white girl from the suburbs? You were shooting up that rich white girl blood again, weren't you? You put it in your veins and now you're becoming one of them. And now all your problems are solved by people, not you. <clears throat> I told you not to put that in your veins. I told you not to do that. I told you not to do that. And you did it. You did it. Now, now no one can help you. No, you'll never be happy because nothing's too good. Nothing's good enough. Nope. Mm -mm. It's over. Go watch horrible Hallmark movie shows and demand an SUV. All right. Hi. <laughs> Such a dick and early in the morning. Uh, hi, Aaron. 31-year-old male living in the United States looking for advice and help with solving an issue with me. Before I start, I just want to mention I absolutely love all your books and your videos <clears throat> have helped me with a lot of life issues, but there's some I have not found in your videos that I'm desperate need. I am in desperate need of fixing and need your advice. I'm just going to get straight to it. I'm glad you didn't waste your time writing two paragraphs, getting straight to it. Uh, for the past year, I've been dealing with an irrational fear of being falsely accused of a crime, being somehow screwed by the police or a prosecutor, particularly something that will put me in prison the rest of my life and there's nothing I can do. I know it's completely irrational, but this fear has been paralyzing me, paralyzing for me, as I'm not able to go out and enjoy life and be happy knowing the worst thing could happen that could happen to me and be falsely accused of something awful. See that? Yeah, that is irrational. You know it's irrational. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I mean, do people get falsely accused? Yes. Do people spend their lives in jail for things they didn't commit? Yeah, sure. Look at what the leftists want to do with you. They look at Stalin like, oh, my God, that's so great. Uh, but, I mean, more seriously, yeah, it's just what, in the past year, did something happen? Why now? Um, and I'm and look, hey, I'm not one uh, to be against taking somewhat extreme measures to make sure I'm not put in a cage for the rest of my life. Like, I know some people that started wearing body cams at work because they had a complaint filed against them. Like, F this. Um, you are dealing with a population that is petulant, immature, and vindictive. Uh, it doesn't even sound like this was, like, related to a false accusation of, of a sexual nature. Sounds like I was just walking around and I got falsely accused and now I'm defending myself against uh, murder. Um, and what else? I just, people are dicks. I could see it. I have, I, I'm, I'm not, in other words, it sprouted up on you. Suddenly you got this fear all of a sudden. Okay. That's irrational. But the fear of being thrown in jail, that's not entirely irrational. Um, so I, I, uh, you know, you had an irrational fear of spiders. Okay, well, that's irrational. And most spiders aren't going to hurt you. Going to, yeah, I could see it. I could see it. This all started after seeing a lot of YouTube videos and articles in cases of people that were shown to be convicted unfairly and are sitting in prison who did nothing wrong. I know a few instances that people were released 30 years later after proving their innocence and were released. <clears throat> if this message is too long, please feel free to add any fee that a problem is not allowing me to feel free to add any fee as this problem is not allowing me to enjoy life and be happy and in desperate need of advice. Okay. So let's start, let's start right here. <clears throat> you're already in prison then. See what I'm saying? Like you're not enjoying life now, but so you now effectively have the same end result of being in prison, except you, you don't have mobility. So you go out, you're living in fear. You're a prisoner of your own mind, or this thing is making it, making it so that you essentially are suffering it. And so the first thing I would do, actually, it's adjacent. I'd go get uh, The Way of Monkey book by Turd Flinging Monkey about stoicism, which <clears throat> the, the stoicism thing is accept what you do and do not control. And the stuff that you don't control, stop worrying about it. 
because worrying about something that is outside of your control is paying is what is it is unnecessary interest on a debt that has to be repaid. And this you in your case, the debt doesn't even necessarily have to be repaid. <clears throat> and I'm not wise or smart or anything. That was a, a I believe a Chinese philosopher that came up with that. But it helped me like it helped me through some tough times where it's like, look, you're something is going to happen no matter what. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You don't control it. Worrying about it is an un unnecessary pain, burden, liability, interest that you pay on, in your case, a debt that may not have to be paid. In most other people's cases, something screwed up, something bad happened, and you're going to have to pay that debt. Worrying about it on top of it is unnecessary, which is why I've, I've really chilled out in terms of thing like well i guess that's the way that one went i guess the way that's one went i don't worry about it anymore and who was the guy oh <clears throat> me and, i went hiking with him me albuquerque adam and he's like i don't worry anymore and it was so like wow you're right i'm not gonna worry anymore no I'm just i'm not gonna it's a choice it's a choice so right now it's affecting your ability to live so i asked the philosophical question unto you well then how how have you not manifested this fear already? How are you not a prisoner already? Um, so that's that's the first thing is worry about it if you are falsely accused. Uh, my question is this fear this fear or is this fear irrational? Oh, wait, bu, 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 bu. my question. Oh, I gotta get up here. This problem is not allowing me to enjoy my life and be happy and in desperate need of advice. All right. <clears throat> now let's give you some teeth. It, you know, I could point that out logically to you. Like, hey, you're already in prison now by your own hand, mentally. But we got to give you some teeth and like as to why. People are like, well, I can't stop. Well, let me tell you why. You you better stop because if you don't, you're, you will, your worst nightmare will become possible, will become reality. And that is you will be in a prison for the rest of your life. All right. Like that, that's it. I would strongly recommend you go read the way of monkey book, study up on stoicism and put in the effort to get your mentality. To understand this is stupid to worry about because I am making my worst fear come true. And if I don't stop it, that will be for the rest of my life. And your entire existence in this universe will have been suffering your nightmare unnecessarily. Right. So that's the first thing I would do. Now, how he I don't know. And and talk to a therapist. I'm no, this sounds like this actually sounds like legit mental problem. Man, mental illness, <clears throat> not a mental disorder, but something like legitimately different. Not like, oh my God, I have so much money and my parents paid for everything and they wiped my ass and I have a touch of the tism and Asperger's and I just can't pay attention and work a job, but I'm really good at video games. <laughs> how do I get the girls? You don't sound like some putz, all right? So I would definitely talk to a therapist as well. But just me, logically, being the pissed-off basement-dwelling Gen X sage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You suck. Everyone sucks. Ah, kick yourself in the nuts. <clears throat> that's that's what I would do. Go study Stoicism. Not master it, but get a functional use of it. Uh, read the way of monkey book by turd flinging monkey be very good I, that's the first thing i would do after this uh and then think about what i said like you're, you're living this misery light right now um so hopefully that that at least puts the problem into context my question is is this fear irrational i would say it is irrational yeah not, nothing happens Just, i mean you're watching television all right being the gf we watch um <clears throat> forensic files. I love that show. And, and I don't know if you noticed if you ever watched the show, but like 95% of the cases, it's the wife getting killed by the husband. The, one, the, the victim is always a woman. Like, geez. And not entirely irrationally, the GF is like, huh, worried. Like, I can't watch anymore. I'm like, well, I bought you a gun. You never take it out. Matter of fact, I've given you my crap gun because you never took out the nice gun I bought you. And now the nice gun I bought you is the gun that I use as my carry. Because if you ain't going to use it, 
at least one of us won't die. I mean, you know, between between us both dying and just you dying, I mean, to be perfectly honest, <laughs> it's true. Well, at least I didn't die. <laughs> Such a dick. Uh, uh, where were we? That is irrational. Uh, so, uh, but getting back to it, so you had this stimuli, you you saw nothing but bad things, and now you're worried. <clears throat> uh, is this fear irrational? I would say it is because well, you know, there's a chance I get hit by lightning. All right, there's a chance to get in a in a, in a car accident. I'd, I'd worry more about that than getting falsely accused and in prison. That's a bigger. If you want to worry about something more, but I would say don't worry about it because you don't control it. And how can I make this constant worrying go away and enjoy life again? Well, let's stop right here. The constant worry, yes, because it's impairing your ability to operate and enjoy life. I don't think it's good to never worry and blissfully just like not worry about things. I think just to like, hey, you ought to remind yourself there's a chance. You know, you get on this plane, oh, there's a chance. It makes you appreciate life a little bit more. But where I really got that like, um, well, I ought to pay attention. It makes it puts you a little more on guard. It makes you pay attention more. And where I got that was riding a motorcycle. Well, obviously, the statistical chances of injury and death is much higher. And so when I go out at, at legitimately 29 out of 30 times, I go out and drive my car. I don't think about an accident. But there's that <clears throat> once a month thing like, oh, yeah, you know. I better pay, be a little bit more on guard, be a little bit more vigilant, get my defenses up. All right. It's not going to cripple me, but I ought to pay attention. Um, oh, you know, the, the solar panels. So people say I'm paranoid. Oh, Aaron, a country and economy based on promoting people based on how far away you are from white male straight to how close you are to crippled bipolar lesbian black vagina when we celebrate people based on how close they are to black vagina uh and give them the jobs that's not oh you're we're all it's just your white male privilege you're just over we're like no i i don't think promoting people based on traits they were born with is good for the electric grid i don't want you promoting ladasha because she happens to be a black woman to the head of the electric grid I want I want Mortimer Snurd over there who has, I don't know, a degree in electrical engineering to do that. Not because she is, happens to be the right color in, in, in plumbing. <clears throat> no, Aaron, you're par No, I'm not paranoid. I'm pretty happy and I feel better. Like, oh, you know, everyone back when I was younger, just because I was that good of an economist. Oh, the sky is falling. You know, not the sky is falling. I'm like, I think I ought to get some food. Get some non-perishable food. Oh, Aaron, you're such a radical Republican. Aha, 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 aha. The housing market and dot-coms and the education bubble isn't going to implode. And now all of a sudden, 20 years ago, okay, yeah, I guess you were right. Uh, that is, hey, Aaron, how do I buy crypto? Uh, you go find a big log, right? You could take the bark off it or not. And you shove it up your ass. That's what you do. Um, <clears throat> so it, it, it's a possibility. There's a chance. There's a risk. There's a threat. I say it's very small. But that's not to say you shouldn't occasionally worry about it, acknowledge it exists. In other words, I'm saying you're not totally irrational. <clears throat> it's your response. It's it's the scale. It's the level at which you worry about it that we got to scale down. Do you ever have this fear, and how do you do? How do I deal with it? I've never had that fear. Well, I mean, yeah, like boy, that would suck. I guess I won't commit crime. But how I deal with fears, um, <clears throat> that like motorcycle riding, or uh, you know, the electric grid. Or just living in crappy towns where they, you know, even the white people hate white people, especially if Republican make money. I take action to lower my risk. 
not even and not I don't even take so much action that it lowers the risk as much as absolutely possible because now I'm ruining my life. You see, I don't have all what could could I build a lead shielded nuclear proof fortress with 30 years food? Sure, I probably could, but my life would would be ruined just the same. And so what I have found helps is if I'm worried about something, because my main goal, go go watch Coach Greg Adams. My main goal is peace and contentment. And part of that is to not worry. <clears throat> Getting to half of which is being a stoic and understanding what you do and do not control. And then the stuff that you do control, I attack it with vigor. I wipe it out. And so what I do is I take every, not every measure, but every reasonable and economic measure possible that lessens my risk. All right, so let's use <clears throat> motorcycle riding as an example. I got a armored jacket. I got a helmet. I got my goggles. I got gloves. I got steel toe boots with boots that goes above my ankles. And then I also wear extra um i get knee pads uh they're actually what are they called greaves um they're for motocross uh a lot of people make fun of me because well those are for motocross i'm like i don't want my shin busted up do you want your shin busted up there mr harley davidson rider oh you do oh you don't use them anyway because you fit in on the rascal you go from your harley to your rascal rascal to your harley and drink your bud light beer while horking down okay there buddy uh like they're shin guards Knee and shin guards. Right. <clears throat> um, I choose where I ride, for example, in Vegas. I don't ride on I-15. That's the main drag that runs parallel to the strip. Because you got every tourist and every foreigner, both domestic and actual out-of-country foreigner, driving like a freaking moron. And let's also mention that the people from Nevada aren't that great of drivers anyway. I always take the bypass or I always go up... Uh, up around, I forget the road, the tabernacle. Um, I try to avoid, I don't ride, I'll ride in downtown Chicago, I'll ride in downtown New York because everyone's going really slow. But I'm very wary. I don't ride during rush hour in medium sized towns like, say, St. Louis or Kansas City or Denver. I don't ride at night when animals are out. I'll ride in the city at night because rush hour is done. There ain't no deer popping up. But out here in South Dakota, oh, yeah, if it's dusk, you're done. You're done riding for the day. That's it. You can get up in the morning, ride once the sun is out. Even then, you still got to keep an eye out for deer. But these deer are all over the place. <clears throat> and so after I take my measures and I have my policies, then I enjoy the ride. I am not letting the – now, I'm vigilant. I keep an eye open. I'm up in the hills. I'm up in whatever. Uh, where do a lot of deer come by? A lot of deer on, uh, what was it, 385? Just, yeah, I'm keeping an eye out. Uh, but I don't, I don't let it ruin my motorcycle or my day. Now, in your case, is it, is it a totally irrational field? Be jailed for the rest of your life? Be in prison? Just have your life essentially ended and tortured? Being No, it's not irrational. <clears throat> All right, what can you do? Well, first, don't commit no crimes. All right? I would even go back and watch uh, all these people being falsely accused. Find out, okay, is there a pattern? Was it purely dumb luck? Or did they have some consistencies? Now, I, I almost guarantee you, guarantee freaking to you, when you look at these falsely accused people, you know what? They're the, they're the people who lie with dogs and get the fleas. They're hanging out with bad element. I'll tell you this story again. Back when it was horrendously illegal to have marijuana on your possession, I drove this idiot to the airport because I was a nice guy. This idiot had a bag of pot fall out of his pocket and on the back seat of my car. It was there for days. I only got a back seat of my car. If I had gotten pulled over, jail time for me. All right. I guarantee if you go back and look at all these people falsely accused, they're hanging out with drug dealers, other criminals, bad family, bad friends, people committing crime. And I'm no forensic scientist, but if you're hanging out at the same party where there's a murder scene, now your fingerprints are all over the place. Your hair follicles are there. 
Uh, did the guy tell you to hold the gun? Now your fingerprints are on the gun. Yo, dog, look, I got me a gat. You want to check out my gat? No, I don't want to check out your gat and have my fingerprints on it. And then you go shoot someone because your crappy drug deal went sideways. Um, I, I hate to say this. I hate, I'm, and I'm sorry, ladies, but it's true. I, I'd be real careful about the women you date. Because there's a, another common thing, and you get falsely accused of any number one of things. Whether that's at work or whether like, oh, he touched me. Uh, there's another, that's a that's a risk. Right? You know, maybe, maybe you don't date the girl with a, a rabid feminist profile. I mean, they're all feminists, don't get me wrong, every young girl is. But check, you know, do, do some screening, vet the people, Google stalk the people you hang out with. Uh, don't go to, if, if there's a, a drinking, John Fitch talks about him and his buddy were at this bar. Both of them are professional fighters and they already intuitively sensed something was off at this bar. I said, we got to get out of here. Nothing had happened yet. Sure enough, as they're leaving, a, a fight breaks out. You don't want to get wrapped up in that. So you're this innocent bystander. All of a sudden you got to start fighting. You throw one lucky punch. Hit some guy right where it counts. He falls, hits his head on a I don't know, concrete corner, and he's he's paralyzed or dead. Uh, <clears throat> avoid Democrat towns. What is it? There's the was it New York or some some security guard shot somebody, or or uh, no was it that one, or was it the the Spasto kid was making threats on the subway and then the ex marine just chokeholded him out. Obviously not attempting to kill him. Did kill him. And now the family sue him for 25 million. How about just don't go where there's like a higher percentage of concentration of bad people, which is what Democrat towns are. They're just bad people. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think what else. Uh, webcam. Have cell phone. Always leave your cell phone on so it's pinging off of the cell phone tower you get you know like in other words you want to keep up an alibi use your credit card for all purchases i'm saying using infrastructure and technology and things that you're going to use anyway like no i was in glendive montana getting gas uh on october the 17th uh 2023 sir your honor and here's some video of me you know and my credit card and my cell phone receipt or records like see i was here that's where i was and thank god we got that technology especially cell phone technology oh no no he was here he or at least the cell phone was so you're avoiding bad people you're avoiding bad environments you're paying attention to your environment like, and then you have always keeping your alibi up like if you're work here let's say this is irrational Let's say you read The Way of Monkey book. Let's say you sit and meditate. Let's say you logically, cryptically think through this all and you still can't get rid of this, this fear. What's a webcam cost or a body cam cost you? Okay, think about the like money, I mean, but also the time. So for a good body cam, you know, something that you have to wear right now, you have this, just like putting on a watch, you have this inconvenience of putting on a body cam. Is it that much of a pain in the ass to put on a watch? Not that much of a pain in the ass to put on the body cam. The body cam also, I don't know. Let's say it's $500. I can't imagine it being that expensive, but let's just say it's a very expensive, a nice body cam. All right, that's $500 upfront expense. And then you got to back up <clears throat> the video uh, religiously on a hard drive and on the cloud. Like um, once a month, I guess. All right, so it's like paying a bill. All right, that price in terms of time and money, will that make you relaxed? Will that put you at ease? Then it's worth it because right now you're saying you can't function. So I'm thinking for, for this minor chore of basically documenting, recording everything you've done. So it gives you a perfect alibi and evidence, or if you're in an actual altercation or some kind of thing, is like, this crime was committed at this time and that time at this location. You're like, yo, dog, I was over in Colorado Springs, Colorado, at the McDonald's. Here's the video. 
And they say, why the hell do you have? That's awfully convenient. You got a video. Then you show them this video. No, he, I was worried. And I hired this schmuck on the internet called Aaron Clarity. And he told me to do that. And they're like, yes, I remember, Your Honor. He did contact me. And, da, da, da. and then the judge looked at me. Where were you on 4 p.m. on October the 17th? Whoa. <laughs> Hang on. I was podcasting. See, all right, all right. You're free to go. <clears throat> and so... Uh, what I'd recommend is why don't you just sit down and figure out some things that you can do to guarantee you got an alibi, lessen the chances you'll be falsely accused. I mean, I'm kind of curious, what, how were they falsely accused? Oh, another thing I was going to say is the um, the Innocence Project. I would contact the Innocence Project. These are the people you probably ran into when you're watching these documentaries. These are the people that will get innocent people out of jail falsely accused i'd ask them that'd be a great question to call and say hey look what it what are the main traits like do all these false falsely imprisoned people are there some key like did they all have some common variables what were their drugs involved was there a criminal in the family i would love to find out what that is and then if you avoid, oh, yeah, they had these three things in common. They were running around with a bad crowd, had a bad family, and there was they knew one person was a criminal or dealing or something. And that's how they got looped into all this. All right. So I, I'd be real curious. And that, that I almost might contact myself. But if it worries you that much, contact the innocence press. Say, what what can we do to prevent being falsely accused? Hell, if you find out, email me. Tell me what they said. That'd be a great video for all the guys out there. <clears throat> but that that's all. That's as far as my thinking takes me. That's that's what I would do. But yeah, if you don't fix this, you're already you're already living your hell. Your worst fear is true. And so that, that's what I would recommend. All right. Let's go to the Super Chats. Man. Hey, Ron Suarez, are the Latino agent in the field? Got a lot of Latino agents in the field. Chris, for five bucks, that's not the first thing you'd do, Cap. You'd buy land in the middle of nowhere and find a job you can do remotely full time. Right. But let's say this guy wants to be social and, and go out. And here's the other thing. He's out in the middle of nowhere and off grid. Well, now he has no electric record that he was anywhere. He's not buying stuff online. He's not getting gas with credit cards, cell phone. You know, if you're really, then you can't prove, well, where were you? I was at my hut in the middle of nowhere, Idaho. Well, can you prove it? No, there's no electric record. I mean, I mean, here's a, there's a video of me going to the, the flying J on the interstate. Well, were you coming or going? I, so, um, but I'll tell you, okay, uh, Chris, let's, the number one cause, the, the cause of all, all problems in society is other people. So if you limit your interaction, so you are right there. If you're not interacting with other people, it's not like, dude, you said you'd help me with this drug job. Like, mm -mm. ADE 613, five bucks. I also got paranoid stuff. I also got paranoid about stuff like this frequently. Only I also get paranoid about where. I might go when I die. Well, that's a rational thing. I don't think that's paranoid. Matter of fact, people should be more paranoid and worried about what happens after they die. Most people aren't. Most people are, hey, what's on television? All right. So link below. Uh, I should have linked to the, the Way of Monkey book by Turd Flinging Monkey. Please get that. Also, the dad you never had, for whatever reason, you got these irrational fears. Dad has to set you down and explain to you. Uh, there's a course there available on teachable.com. All right. More on the way. See you guys later. Toodles.